Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming to our panel, Game Devs the Next Generation. Uh, I'm Tim Lowe, and I'm the Executive Director of the Mass Digital Games Institute, which is based out in Worcester at Becker College. Uh, we're, we work across the state with uh, students, faculty, uh, across a variety of academic institutions. Uh, uh, we work with a lot of indie studios, more established studios, and uh, subjects of interest to them, and then we work with different levels of government as well to see how uh, government can be helpful in growing the sector here in the state. Uh, we run a number of programs. We have uh, the Game Challenge. Some of you here may have participated in that. It takes place uh, this year. It'll take place February uh, 6th and 7th. Uh, it's a pitch contest. It's great. It's a lot of fun. If you have an idea, uh, start pulling it together now and come to the Game Challenge and maybe you can win some really great prizes and uh, learn a lot and meet a lot of great people. Uh, we also run a summer innovation program, and that's what we're, we're here to talk about today. Uh, that summer innovation program uh, is open to uh, college and university students uh, across the country. Uh, they apply to it, it's very competitive. Uh, the 22 students we selected this year uh, were sorted out from uh, over 150 applications. And uh, once they're in, they come to Worcester, Becker College, our host institution, gives us a dorm and labs, and they run their own studios, essentially, those 22 students, with industry mentors and other guidance provided to them. But really, it's their show, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, my colleague, Monty, will take over in a minute. Uh, but we have right here, at the end, Warren Sherman. Warren's a student here at MIT. Uh, Andrew Krischer at Northeastern, Paige Koblenz at RISD, Pat Rowan, WPI, and James Spaff, Spaffold, <laughs> and Becker. Uh, so they'll be here, they'll tell you a little bit about the program, the challenges uh, that go into making games, and what, is, uh, um, what those challenges look like from a, from a college student's perspective. Great. All right, so one of the key elements of the summer program is we don't want to tell anybody what to do. We want to try and help them avoid horrible mistakes, but otherwise all the decisions, creative direction is entirely up to them. Uh, we think that's the way people learn the best, and you know, and just from the summer, we we're totally blown away with the, uh, the level of output, the quality, what these guys are able to pull off. So, um, why don't we take a look at the games, and what we'll go through is what we do at the end of every session of a postmortem. We look back and we say, what did we do right, what did we do wrong, how did we do that stuff better, and hopefully that'll give you a sense of what the whole experience is like. <coughs> so, um, why don't we have you guys introduce your game, and then I will play the trailer, assuming that this is going to work. Uh, so, Cats? Uh, well, Cats Tsunami is a game that I've worked on. It is a side-scrolling platformer where you are a cat surfing on waves of cats. <laughs> what more needs to be said? Um, in addition to making the games, they also built the trailers. So. Oh, it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is great custom music built into it. Except, oh, they're feeding it into that. So, no? No. Well, then there's something in the audio chat. <laughs> Alright, so cut the air out. And we'll run the time over there. Uh, uh, oh, actually, it's not even showing up there. Yeah. No. Just open a browser and... Uh, I've got a browser here. Um, it's the window share. Are these games out? These games will be out shortly. Why don't we just keep rolling and we'll, uh, we'll show you the trailers when we uh, come by. We'll show you the trailers, they're really cool. Uh, the games are going to be released uh, over the next few months. And we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, so why don't we go through the games. Uh, Rowan? 
I worked on Many Mini Things, which is a mini game game for the Leap Motion, which if you haven't heard of it, it's a little sensor for your computer that would sit right in front of it and it could detect your fingers and hand movements. So you use basic hand movements to fulfill a series of challenges. Think of sort of Super Smash Brothers, waving your hands around, hitting people, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Limbs? Uh, yeah, so the game I worked on was called Limbs. It's a max 3 game with Mad Scientist Player, and there's also some puzzle and combat elements to it. And zombies. Oh yeah, so many zombies. And limbs. <laughs> they had a rather hard task of taking a max 3 game, of which there's a bazillion, and trying to find a way to do it in a new way, something that loved here and felt here. And it really did quite well at it. Um, Midnight Terrors. Yeah, I worked on Midnight Terrors, which is a tower defense game that takes place in the child's bedroom, kitchen, living room. Uh, basically, he plays Casey, the scared child back here, and you're trying to defend him from his nightmares, which are trying to enter his room, and you put toys on his floor to defend him from his nightmares. And I think they're, what, nine levels currently? It's a pretty great game. <laughs> the, the, the games are really impressive. We're up in the digital showcase. Come by, you'll be able to play them, you'll be able to uh, see the trailer, and you'll be able to talk to the students. Um, let me ask you for each of your games, what, is, what aspect, what element do you think you're most proud of? So, Steph? Uh, I work on Zooms, by the way. Um, I thought I'm most proud of is that people played it and it was like, oh, it's like Candy Crush. And then after they played it, no, it's not like Candy Crush. And that feeling of victory was the best thing ever. Bro? <laughs> For many, many things, we really got the feel just right. So we wanted to make sort of a party game where people could just go up to it and jump right in and have fun with their friends. And we got that. Whenever we showed game, the game to a group of people, more people would come <laughs> over to watch it and would be trying to get their hand over the leap motion to get their next turn to play. So it was pretty cool. We had a couple of guys from one of the state agencies come and visit. Uh, not even one of them were big gamers. They were there for easy half an hour before we pulled them off the game. <laughs> so it, it really hit the target. Dave? Uh, for Cat Tsunami, we struggled a bit with how the game played, but visually, people were really interested in it. It has a quirky, sort of cute feel. And we also were able to combine 3D and 2D, which surprisingly were seamlessly. So we were really proud of that. And they have knitted creations. Yes, hold up Kai. That's the main character. So Lily not only was a programmer on the team, but she's the chief knitter. <laughs> she put that in the credits. Yeah. I think we should call it an action figure. Yeah. <laughs> knitted action figures. There's a whole new business then. That'd be great. Andrew. Um, yeah. I mean, the part I'm most proud of is kind of what Rowan said. Um, putting it in front of someone, and they have playtesters play it, so they're not forced to play it, but sort of forced to play it. Yeah, the and the feeling you get when um, they just keep playing it is really great. You know, you do something good when that happens. Or, I think what sort of warms my heart the most when people were playing Midnight Terrors was how much they empathized the main character. Like, when, <laughs> when like, monsters got under his bed or something, you know, you get more scared, and they'd be like, oh no, oh no, I've got to stop them, I've got to stop these monsters. And they were just getting so into the game. I wasn't expecting that level of immersion, but it was really great. And you know what I would say is the biggest thing that, that blew us away and blew away a lot of the industry people we have every week, a few industry people will go through. We were all blown away with what these guys could create. And as wonderful as they all are, um, I actually think that it's a general ability of students to be able to do work at that level if they're given the opportunity, if they believe they can. So, um, you know, we expect amazing things from them. Now that everybody's feeling good, what did you do wrong? Uh, Paige. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I'm biased. I'm the art director, so uh, that's why I'm really proud of the art part. But um, a lot of the comments that we You're got. You're going to rip our art program. I did a lot of the comments we got. They did great. Programs did great. But a lot of the comments we got were um, the gameplay felt a little off with our device. We weren't really utilizing how an iPhone works. And um, I think it's because we 
when we started, there, we made uh, really quick, dirty models. And instead of really trying to make how our games would play in the end, we didn't get to that. So, um, yeah, yeah it, our, uh, our first model wasn't really what our game was going to be. And we probably should have done that first. In, 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 you know, I would actually say that's not a, the programmer's issue. I, I blame the producer because he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it was it was not one person controlling the vision, and that is really hard for students to do because they're all coming in at the same level. They all have ideas, but if there isn't somebody making a cut one way or another, it's hard. It's still a very fun game, but that was uh, that was a trick, uh, Lauren. Okay, Midnight Terrors, um, say the main issue with that game that persisted for really most of the program was the fact that uh, we had one 2D artist and one 3D artist, so there were some two-dimensional assets like monsters and the main character, but the room and the environment were three-dimensional, so we had a lot of trouble reconciling those two things, and we kind of pulled it together at the end with a lot of help from Paige, actually. Um, yeah, we had a lot of cross-team help stuff. Uh, but I still think we could have done some more work on it to make it look a little smoother. Okay, in a tower defense game, it's ridiculously hard to balance. Uh, I thought uh, Joe did a wonderful job on that. Yeah, it's, um, it, 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 it is really amazing to work that in that tower. Um, Andrew? The biggest trouble we had was probably working with the technology that we had. So we were using Unity, and I had really no experience in that. So that Indian experience kind of shined through later on when like, you know, the small bugs, the small inconsistencies really start popping up. And um, I mean, I was a programmer, programmer on the project. So the biggest problem, I think, was kind of became a giant ball of mud. But in the end, it worked out, so I'm happy. So yeah. Uh, I was a lead programmer for Linux. <laughs> uh, we kind of, uh, it was, the, what you were talking about is direction. Uh, I was not very lead programming. I was more producer-y, more lead programming. I don't, I don't know, it was, it was a really wishy-washy. And Andrew was the producer, that's why. Yeah, we traded hats like every other day. Um, every minute. But I agree completely with that. Yeah, like there was, uh, our prototype was just parallel systems everywhere. Um, and we was like, okay, we can't do this in the actual game. And we kind of did. <laughs> Uh, but like we tried to stray as far away, it was like no, we need it, and then it's like no, uh, and that was that was probably definitely the most uh, horrible thing that we did. But, yeah. and, and I'll also say you guys probably had the most mechanics of any game. Um, they had gravity going two ways. They had all sorts of other stuff going on. Uh, very impressive stuff. Actually, we we took it into Deniers, which makes Marvel Puzzle Quest, another Connect Three game. And from the designers there repeatedly, wow, you guys did that, that's a great idea, that's better than we did in our game. So, you know, they might have uh, paralleled a bunch of stuff, but they also accomplished a great bit. Rome? Yeah, so again, I was on many, many things, and our main problem was, for about half of the program, we didn't actually have a theme down. We knew that we wanted to make a series of mini games with the lead motion, but we didn't know what the casing of the game would be, so to speak. Like when you were in menus or between the mini games, what would actually happen? Originally, we had this knight character that was walking around killing enemies, and each enemy was a mini game, but no one understood that at all. And we just kept thinking to ourselves, well, if we just add this thing, if we just add this thing, then they'll understand it. They never did. So eventually, there was just a day where we said, we can't do this anymore. We need something. And one of our very quiet team members said, well, what about a capsule machine? And then we cheered, and because we actually had a theme, and we made her talk more. Because she had <laughs> <laughs> the sparklers were always quiet. It was neat. It was like you drop in a quarter, you get a little capsule, and it was great. Um, the part of working in the team is, is the big learning that sort of comes uh, from doing this, especially working with other disciplines, so programmers, artists, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I'll throw it open to you guys. What did you learn the most about the other discipline? Matt and Lily can answer too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark. Okay. This has been, um, I guess I have a new appreciation now for 
how painstaking sprite animation is. <laughs> um, because I was the one who imported all the sprite animation from the artists, and like, um, I knew that it, you know it was it was kind of painstaking to draw out each individual sprite, but uh, I didn't realize the sort of constraints they worked with because those sprite sheets get really big really fast. So there's a sort of quality versus animation smoothness problem. It's, you've got to be really clever to solve it. But props to all the two D animators. Hey, Drew, you guys want to strike back for us? <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned from the programming side that it's not magic because I have, <laughs> I have no experience with programming outside of Dr. Racket or whatever the teaching program is. So we were working with this strange hardware device that had an SDK that was still in beta. And we would be trying to get mini games to work, and I would look at it and be like, oh, well, it would be cool if you could do this motion. And the programmer's like, no, that would take a year. <laughs> so it made me realize that they're not just sitting there making magic happen, it's actually logic and work that they have to do. I still don't know how it works, but I can appreciate that. Yeah, it's still magic to me. It was incredible watching it all come together. James? Uh, our artists. Um, I learned that I'm not, I can never do art. But, um, <laughs> I guess that's well, but if we, we do that kind yeah, of yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't, I think I had a great relationship with the artist. I would make something completely horrible in paint and then put it in as a temp asset and then they would immediately replace that for me. <laughs> uh, which was a great pipeline, but <laughs> start by offending the artist. <laughs> you know, where's your big stuff? Use Comic Sans uh, if you're producing program art. Uh, no, like, I had, uh, we had Kat on the team for art uh, in Siena, and they were both ridiculously good. Um, it was nice, like, I would say I need something, like a button, like, recolored, and it would be like that. They were so fast, um, if you just ask, you just have to talk to them, I guess, is what I learned. It, it you got to talk to them, that's Yeah, like you that. have to actually we should put that on a t-shirt. There's no, there's, there's no library. <laughs> you have to actually talk to your team. Uh, like, most programmers don't talk to the artists, and they're like, where's the art? It's like, well, you didn't tell me you needed this. So you kind of have to tell them that you need it. A document isn't great. I have, uh, like, re related to that, communicating between coders and artists, I found it a little <laughs> difficult at first because I go to an art school, so I'm only used to talking to other animators, other artists, so I have to find other ways to communicate, which I think is really useful. Now, for you guys, was this is this the first time you worked with multiple programmers, multiple artists on something? For me it was, yeah. yeah. For me it was. Programming artists no. <laughs> uh, Ron? Yeah. How was the experience working with another artist? Um, it was interesting. So at WPI, they tried to get large groups of people to work at things together, but somehow I was always the odd person of the class who had to work by themselves. So actually working with another artist, I realized I can't just run off and make all the assets in my own style. I have to actually make sure that they match and that we agree on things. And that can be terrifying, because you have to go up to someone else who is either on the same level as you or maybe a little better, and say, so I think that we should go with this style, would that work for you? And actually discuss your strengths and weaknesses with another person. But it all worked out, it was really cool and fun once we got over that initial barrier of not really knowing how to talk to each other about it. Andrew? What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Working with another program. Oh, yeah. Say whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, it was great. I mean, working with Spav right here, he was the other programmer on the team. Uh, we really connected really well. Um, I do have a newfound appreciation, though, for basically the producer role. And um, I was like the producer on the team, and it's interesting because you have to constantly communicate with everyone and keep everyone in touch because it's so easy, even like in our little circle of the programmer circle, it's easy to like choose a direction in the game and then totally keep the, the artist out of the loop, totally unintentionally. And so really just keeping a project on task and more so just keeping everyone like knowing what's actually going on is a huge ordeal. And I'll ask one more question and then I'll open it up to the audience. Um, uh, for each of you, if you had the time machine, you could go back to the beginning of the summer. You weren't allowed to tell anybody anything. 
but what would you do differently individually? Bro? Um, I was lead producer of many, many things. As I had mentioned before, we didn't have a theme until halfway through the game, and that was pretty bad. So I would make sure that we had a direction, and even if we changed it, that was fine, but at least we would have something, as opposed to just making things up as we went along. Um, I, would, I would basically say, let's work on the pathfinding algorithm now, instead of putting it off till like a few weeks before the program ends, and using a placeholder algorithm that make the last few levels really buggy and laggy, because that was a huge problem. And we just sort of started fixing all the little things because we didn't want to tackle the pathfinding. And there was that one day when the program was going to end in like two or three weeks. We were like, okay, I guess we, we can't ship this with like one frame per second once you get a bunch of towers out. Um, but that should have happened a lot earlier in the program. It's get the core mechanics down before you do the details, basically. Cheers. Um, I would have cut a lot of our features right off the bat. We kind of took way too long to do that. I would have just been the naysayer right off the bat. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, we started with a simple idea, just a like, basic platformer sort of idea, and started adding a lot to it later, like levels, you know, we sort of lost our way. So I think as a team, we should have focused more on our core idea and core gameplay. Andrew? Um, I worked on Lens again, and the um, thing I would change is basically being able to ask for help earlier, and help as in like ideas, so thoughts on like the way to approach something. Because we were living together, 23 students in a house, so we saw each other like 18 hours a day, right? And just knowing how to ask for help is really important, and I would have done that more. Any questions? I can keep going, but if there's stuff in the audience, okay? Um, I noticed that, or what is uh, Midnight Terrace play on? It's a tablet game. I know Wobbles from last year's old tablet are non-traditional methods are of playing the games preferred, or do you allow people to program games that like that? They can use, they can program for whatever they want. We restrict them to using Unity, so we can get more synergy between the uh, between the programmers. The, uh, the one thing that we have found is mobile games from their scope lend themselves better for the amount of time we had. So if we gave these guys PCs and said, go ahead, build a wide open PC game, we'd still be at week one. Um, you know, am I wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And week two. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so uh, I'm sorry if this was answered before, but how many were on the team and what are your backgrounds? Uh, did you go into this knowing Unity, not knowing Unity? Uh, also, I'd ask what, what uh, program language you're, you're using. Were you using C Sharp or JavaScript? And sort of, were you guys working like 24 7 for 11 weeks or just kind of eight hours a day and uh, that kind of thing? Yeah, answer whichever parts you want. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was mostly eight hours a day until the very end um, and a few sort of crunch weeks in the middle that was very well structured. Um, it's structured crunch weeks. Um, and some of us went in knowing Unity. I knew Unity when I went in. Some people on my team didn't. They caught up. It was fine. Uh, we programmed mostly in C Sharp. That was, that was for most of the game period. Did anyone use Java? <coughs> you use Java? Okay. Mostly C Sharp. Okay. Oh, everyone used C Sharp. Yeah. I think that was also a requirement. Yeah. Okay. Um, Andrew, you're on the team. Yeah. 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 Four to six. So there were two teams of six, one team of five, and one team of four. Plus the sound guy. Plus friends. Plus, Plus friends. Sound guy. <laughs> That's what I mean. So and actually, we should we should take a moment and say that we had uh, Renzo from the Berkeley School of Music who did an incredible job. So he kicked out sound effects music for all four games as well as custom music for the trailers. Uh, just incredibly productive. He was us. Andrew? So um, our team was four people plus Renzo, our sound guy. Um, my background, I had no experience in Unity. Um, my experience was in Java and like other object-oriented programming styles. Um, 
So I spent the first week just like literally sho shoving my head in community, figuring out how it worked. Um, what were the other questions? Uh, uh, basically, well, program learning was answered uh, yeah. kind of amount of time and, and sort of your background. Like, um, which I guess goes into, are you guys game design majors anywhere? Mm -hmm. Are you guys like, were you guys like freshmen, junior, that sort of thing? I'm in my third year right now, and I am computer science and game design major. So. Warren, you're in your second year? Yeah, I'm here at MIT, actually, I'm a sophomore. We, I think we had three, two or three people heading into their second year, two or three heading into their third year, maybe a little more than that, and then the rest were going to be seniors this year. Uh, but, you know, functionally, I didn't see a difference between what year they were in and what their output was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, they all did amazing jobs. Okay? Um, well, I'm an animator. I was the art director, so I didn't have many, much uh, coding background or anything, but, um, much. far... <laughs> <laughs> any? Okay. <laughs> I can code a website, kind of. Sure. Um, the programmers on my team, since we were working with Unity, they didn't know it on day one, but by day two, they already had made something. So that was really great. They learned really fast. That's great. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe Matt was sandbagging the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Next. Yeah. So I'm a game design professional writing major at WPI. I'm a senior now, and I didn't know any code. I had used Unity before for artistic purposes, like making a little environment and having a circle bounce around as a character. And that was my experience with the engine. But I did know Maya and ZBrush and all those 3D modeling tools and Photoshop and Illustrator, which I use since our game is 3D. Uh, I'm a senior from Mecca College. Uh, I only really use Unity for level design, um, and that was really it. Um, and a little bit for a lot of code. But um, the most of my programming was in graphics programming, but uh, switching to Unity wasn't that horrible. C, C Sharp is pretty similar. And then just to make it entertaining, we had them all use per force source control branches. And we had, I, I'd say, 90% compliance on using per force. <laughs> Let's stick with that. <laughs> Let's leave the illusion in place, but it was good. Background? What's Unity? What's Unity? Yes. It's just being together. <laughs> Unity 3D is uh, is a development environment for games specifically. It lets you build cross-platform games very so, easily. So it's like a program. It's, yeah, it's free. Uh, download it for free. Try it. Uh, actually, you guys can all run Unity. It is not that hard to get into. Apparently, it takes what a day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I understand there's a lot of technical stuff that goes on, but um, in terms of like interpersonal relations and team dynamics and negotiating uh, between directions and everything else, it sounds like you guys were just like slapped together. How did that work out, and what did not, you learn from that? Not entirely slapped. There was some picking and choosing as to how we put them together. Mm -hmm. But um, these guys were bizarre. They all got along. Uh, <laughs> unnaturally so. It was almost creepy sometimes. Like <laughs> all through the summer, they all just got along. Yeah. I, I've never heard of that. <laughs> it boggles the mind. So were you guys baking? What? Can I interject here? I mean, like we would have wet wobbin Wednesdays. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, days. Uh, most Mondays. So like we would go out together and get food usually after the work day. So like we would eat together and and we lived together. Yeah. Yeah, surprisingly, that didn't cause any confusion. I, I don't know. I, I will believe it to be an atypical result. <laughs> um, it, 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 it surprised me. Like in the first week or two, in, in the group dynamics, you're always, you, you know, you learn. First week or two, everybody's fine, they all get along. Then it starts to get ugly, then it settles down. I was waiting for the ugly all through the summer. There wasn't any. You guys will probably never have that experience again when you get yeah. out to the workplace. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and not only that, they stay friendly after they left, and they keep doing work. Unbelievable. Uh, some of the best hires coming out of the program uh, ever. These guys will land awesome jobs. Or start their own companies. Yeah? 
My son is sitting up in the front row as a freshman in high school, and he's interested in the graphics side of, of computer gaming. What sort of advice or what as to background should he uh, type of classes or courses should he take if that's his interest? So which one of these is yeah. all right. <laughs> I so I don't have to to <laughs> yeah, I wanted to clarify something though. Um, so you want to do art for games. Okay. So um for Yeah, sure would be a little more committed to that. <laughs> Feel the passion. But um for 3D, I would recommend knowing Maya, of course, since it's pretty much industry standard. ZBrush for more, um, it's more about the common play than ZBrush. Then, of course, Photoshop, making textures, making 2D assets. Um, Illustrator, if you want to do vector design as your 2D assets. Um, you were using a program I've never seen before. Photoshop? Oh, um, there's just so many programs out there, and knowing a lot is pretty important in the industry. I think we're talking about 3D code. Yeah, probably. Is that it? Yeah. Um, I mean, just knowing like the whole Adobe suite, as many 3D programs as you can. I think the more programs you know, the more it'll help you. It won't hurt knowing a program no one's heard about as long as it helps you. As long as it helps you make something. I think it's, it's better. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. if, if, you know, like if, if you're young and, and you're starting out with things, I'd actually say don't sweat it too much. Do stuff that amuses you. Um, you know, if you're doing stuff that's fun, you'll learn. You don't have to, all right, I'm going to nail this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get to this level. Just do stuff that's amusing. Always be doing something useful. Um, it was amazing as the artists, no matter what was going on, would at least be doodling on something, would be drawing. They were constantly working on their art. And it was just, it was habit to them. Right? And the programmers went stairs and they just did code the back of their hands. <laughs> <laughs> or on our computers that we have. Yeah. Uh, and any questions about music, we have our, our composer here as well. So. Okay. Um. Stand up, Renzo. Hello. Hey. <laughs> know each other, we did really quick um, game design ideas that centered around some sort of theme, like you make a game out of all the stuff in your backpack or something like that, and we would have five or ten minutes to quickly make a game, and then we would pitch it to the rest of the, the people there. And that helped us just sort of like a way to get used to pitching ideas to each other. So when we got to the part where, okay, now we're going to be pitching actual like digital games, like design something for the leap motion in the instance of many, many things. And then after we had um, a good amount of digital games that we had come up with centering around certain things, we voted on the top four. And that's how we got the four games that we worked on. And then they ranked, each student ranked which ones they'd like to work on. And then I stuck them on whatever teams I wanted to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of uh, design docs, anybody want to talk about the initial design docs? Do you guys even remember your initial design docs? <laughs> yeah, um, I wrote most of them, uh, those ones. Uh, so we had, um, the main one we had was of course the game design document, which outlined pretty much what we wanted in the game. It was two pages. Yeah, two pages minimum, or maximum rather. Um, and then off of that we had like comparable games, um, our sell sheet, which explained like how it would make money, even though, I don't know what the for that, but, uh, <laughs> but the, the game design document was the most the biggest one, and we basically we kept pretty close to it. I think um, Andrew, yeah, oh yeah, pretty close. Um, we had to maybe cut a couple things or change it a little bit. Uh, we actually made a paper prototype at one point, which was literally us 
moving pieces of paper like it was a match three game, and that helped us figure out our control scheme. Andrew, you want to add to the paper covered site? Yeah, that you can I guess it saved us like four days of work, you know, doing it in an hour or two. So it's always good, even as ridiculous as it seems. It worked for us. Yeah. We've got time for maybe one more question. For the, who here is a college student? Other than the ones I know. <laughs> Uh, so, if, if, and if you know college students, so uh, the program's open to any college student going to an accredited uh, school. So that means none of the full sale, DeVry ones, er, anything else. We're not particular where the school is. Yes, we're Mass DC, but if you go to school in Philly and, um, and you qualify, we'll let you in. Uh, we're, we're interested in bringing the talent together. We're really thrilled with the synergy that these teams got, and, and even the three years previously, which didn't get along, so Stepford wives did. But <laughs> they, the synergies they found working across schools was tremendous. So you know, we we like to reach wide. Um, when you apply, you need to have a portfolio. Show us what you've done. It should be easy for us to access. We don't want to download a zip file and try and find what you meant. Uh, do that really simply. Get a recommendation from a professor. Those are your best shots for, for getting in. And then, uh, and then it's just all fun after that. It was good. We, we worked, you know, in terms of crunch. The game industry has been unfortunately focused on crunching for long periods of time which all the studies have shown gives you bad product. So what they've seen is you can crunch for about a week, then you need two weeks to recover. Otherwise your productivity just goes down the can. So what we tried to do was too many crunches during the, uh, the, the program. We used Kanban boards and uh, stages of demo, prototype, production, uh, beta, alpha, beta, and that. So, at each of those stages, we'd set a date to hit this stage at this time, which would mean for a few days, they'd amp up a little bit. At the end, because they're students, and the deadline was coming, at least the night before they were all counting. You know, it, but it was amazing. They, uh, you know, they were in the morning. After we did the post-mortem, they were still doing stuff. Uh, and, and so that was, that was great dedication. So did you use any type of standard project management methodology when you went through it or? We did kind of it. So we put out the process on a whiteboard. We had stickies. Each person would take their sticky, put their name on it for the task, and move it through the process. OK. We, we tried Agile uh, in previous years, and it was a little heavy for our, uh, our purposes. Mm -hmm. So Kanban kept it pretty free, but it did let us slip a little bit on focus on design, uh, which we'll fix next year. Any last words, guys, or from any of the other people who were in the program? Uh, I can say something quickly. Um, since, as a person who um, who only got, who basically was the only person to work on all four, um, I was blown away by the experience. I came in the program not even knowing if I wanted to work in games. I was thinking maybe movies or maybe even do performing on drum set or something like that. But after this summer, I'm completely convinced. And the interesting thing is I can't even give a single special mention to anyone because every single person did something and contributed something amazing like to all these games. And because of this program, like I'm, I'm convinced on what I want to do with my career. So any internships that you can find like these, go for them. They, they'll they provide so much more value than, than you'll expect. And of course, Renzo, this was an atypical experience. <laughs> <laughs> this was good. All right, well, thank you all very much. If you have any other questions, please come by the booth, see the games, play them, talk to the students about the experience. There's also others who've been in previous years around. Uh, they've got lots to say. Thank you.